So by this stage in the calculus game, you can solve differential equations, but we haven't concentrated too much on how differential equations might be applied to a real scenario. So in the lesson plans for today or near today, you have a packet of three worksheets relating to applied differential equations. And I'm going to take that first worksheet and I'm going to go over it um, in depth. But as you do the other two for the homework, one thing I definitely think you should be aware of is you're probably going to want to study the solutions very carefully after you've tried it yourself because you're probably going to do just as much learning by studying those solutions and comparing it to what you thought as you will by going through this video. But the two of them together should be A-OK. -okay. And for this very first example, um, and if you don't have the worksheet handy for you right now, you can you can read this and you should probably pause the video and either read on the sheet or the video so you really understand that scenario. So basically what we have is a situation where a cup of coffee has a certain temperature after it's poured and then over the next 20 minutes the coffee is cooling. Well, this is described by some calculus right here. Uh, this differential equation, which by the way, could also be thought of as a first derivative, dc dt. dc represents the change in Celsius degrees. dt represents the change in time. So the temperature is changing over time, and this is the formula at which it changes. But we've got a problem here. dc dt implies, especially if you go by what we talked about earlier in the year, that the temperature is changing with respect to time where t is your variable. So another way to say that would be something like um, c prime of t. Both of these symbolisms say t is the variable. But if you take a look inside your other right-hand side of that differential equation, there is no t. So the change in Celsius degrees with respect to time does not allow for an input of time. It involves an input of degrees. So that's kind of the basis of all differential equations. The rate of change of some item, in this case degrees Celsius, is equal to or related to the degrees Celsius at that point in time. So it's kind of a deep concept. But the fact that there's not a t in there is going to come back to get us later on when we take a derivative of this. These first two questions involve interpreting a derivative value at a certain point, but I've purposely chosen one to have a point of c equals 80 or 80 degrees and one to have a point in time of t equals 3. And this is the type of uh, sentence that the AP grader is going to want to look for. Are you using units? Are you using context? Are you accurate with your context? But what you should do is just pause the video and look at these two explanations as it relates to the symbolism you see. And you should notice probably more precise language than would be your instinct to write. And the big difference here is we're evaluating at time three minutes. And here we're evaluating it at temperature 80 degrees. But they're both giving us a rate of change of the temperature at those points. This next question wants to know the exact rate at which the coffee is cooling when the temperature is 70 degrees. Well, since dc dt gives us a rate of cooling, and we're given a 70 for our c, we can literally just plug in a 70 where there used to be a c, and we end up with our answer. Basically, the coffee is cooling at 12.274 degrees Celsius per minute. You could put a negative in front of there or you could use the words that say it is cooling at this rate. But it was pretty easy because if they gave us a C equals 70, I can plug a C equals 70 in there. This next question though 
becomes more difficult because they want to know the rate at which the coffee is cooling but now they're not going to give us a C value they're going to give us a time value time zero well that's a problem because if I have a T equals zero and I want to find a rate change of the temperature notice that this differential equation like we've been emphasizing does not have a spot to plug in a T row row trouble well in this case a good detective would say hey at time zero they happen to give us a temperature it's 91 degrees so by lovely coincidence thank you question writer T equals zero has a 91 degree temperature so C is 91 so we can make that connection we can make that connection and complete this problem by the way side note notice the units um, and I should put a negative there but again remember it's cooling at a rate of 16 degrees Celsius per minute or negative 16 degrees Celsius per minute but notice these units degrees Celsius over time change in degrees Celsius over change in time Leibniz is always nice to you and he hints to you what your units should be so on that problem we just did we had the lovely coincidence that time zero relates to 91 degrees because that was given to us in the problem but what if we wanted to do the same situation but now at time five you would now have a problem you can't input a t equals five into your differential equation you don't have any information from the problem what the c value the celsius degrees value is at t equals five so you would kind of be stuck there and as we go on to the final question on this front page we say well what happens if it's unacceptable to be stuck what happens if you really do need to find out the the rate of change of the temperature um, at t equals 5 I shouldn't say okay well if you could find the temperature at t equals 5 then you could find the rate of change of the temperature at t equals 5 so anyway how could we bail ourselves out of this situation and that's what's going to happen on the other side of this page if we can take that differential equation that we're working with and solve it in other words turn it into a C of T equation then we can help ourselves out so before we go over to the other side let me remind you of the big picture of what's happening right now we have a differential equation DC DT it definitely means some stuff it means the rate of change of the temperature over time but we can convert this into a C equals equation and that's what you've learned to do when you've learned to solve differential equations and that's what we're doing over here on the second side here is my original differential equation and I'm gonna go through the steps and this one's quite a bit of a monster I'm gonna go through the steps and eventually turn it into a C of T equation so you probably want to take some time to study these steps and be pausing the video at certain spots but basically I've done the separation of variables and then after the separation of variables I'm gonna go ahead I make some eyeball adjustments to make it a little easier to do reverse power rule but going from here to here and here to here I've done the antiderivative um, with my plus C but now we have to be careful because we have a C that's our variable so we might mix up the plus C so I made up a new symbol for our plus C it's plus C sub K so separation of variables eyeball adjustments antiderivative and now once I've done the antiderivative I've combined the two C's my job is solve for C to make it a C equals equation that's the equivalent of solve for y to make it a y equals equation but also solve for this c to figure out what our constant is remember you can do those in any order so in the way I went here I plugged in the time 0 and the temperature 91 temperature 91 time 0 
I did that early to solve for my constant c sub k. And once I solve for my constant c sub k, now I need to solve for my c, which would act like a y in most differential equations. So I eventually go through that mess, and it probably would take some studying on your part to agree with to all those steps, much less do them on your own, but I know you can. We end up with this C of T equation. Now I have a C of T equation. I can plug in time, like that last question on the first side said, what would I do if I needed to know information about T equals 5? I plug in a 5, which means I plug in a 5, and I can actually get the temperature. So my original differential equation tells me a lot about the rate of change of the temperature. And if I'm brave and handy with the calculus, I can turn it into a C of T equation as well. And now I can know things about the temperature. And I can know things about the rate of change of the temperature. There's one last thing on some of these other two worksheets that you're going to do that you're going to run across that has not been on this worksheet so far. And that's basically this. If I take my differential equation, but this time instead of working with this as a rate of change of temperature or solving this differential equation to make it a C of t, what if I wanted to do the derivative, the second derivative, actually? What if I wanted to do that? First of all, there's a bunch of danger going on here. So that's the first point. And then the second point is you probably don't know what that represents. So I'm going to talk about that too in the end. But here's the danger. If I'm going to take the derivative of this, I have to notice that this is with respect to time. But there's no t variable in there. So when I do that, I take the derivative of this piece, that's power rule, exponent down, lower the exponent by 1. But what you really, really need to be aware of, and it's hard for your brain to remember to do this, is you have to tack on this symbol. Because it just said, I took the derivative of a c term, but this whole thing is with respect to time. So it's a version of implicit differentiation that sneaks right by you. When I took this derivative, it was with respect to time, so I have to add on a dc dt. A good analogy is if you remember back in the day when you were doing related rates problems, you would come across this equation a lot of times if you had a triangle related rates problem, and then you had to take the derivative with respect to time. And so you would write this, And you didn't really know why you were doing that. You just knew, hey, I'm supposed to do this. So the derivative of this x term is 2x. You had to tack on the dx dt because you just took the derivative of an x term with respect to time. Derivative of y term with respect to time. Derivative of the h term with respect to time. That was pretty easy because that was just something you learned to do. And you said, hey, I'm just going to do it because that guy told me to do it. Over here, this is the one that would get by you. So it's the same thing as that, just in a more complicated scenario. But now what you would then have to do is say, OK, if this is my second derivative, I have to take this dc dt and substitute it, because I can't really have those symbols in there. But I know what dc dt is. It's this thing. So if I just take this thing boop, and plug it in boop, where dc dt used to be, now I have this big ugly formula. This big ugly formula is the second derivative. And what it represents is this. Remember we solved our differential equation to get this c of t? Well, that's a graph. You could graph that. You could plug that right into Desmos or your graphing calculator and see what it looks like. Well, that original function that we got by doing a solving of the differential equation has this for a first derivative, so this is the formula for the slope of that original function at any point I care about. And this is the concavity equation. This monster tells me the concavity of this. All right, 
I know that was a lot of information. That's why we're going to take this packet uh, slowly, and I'm encouraging you to check your solutions as you go through it. See ya.